Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for sparing your time to join us today for what is number seven in our webinar series for NavTalk. I'm going to move across in a minute to show an agenda, but before that, uh, I'll just go through a little bit of housekeeping. The platform we're using is called 23, and you'll be able to see at the top right-hand corner of the screen, we'd love for the audience, anyone, uh, to ask questions. We are, after all, presenting a new product today, so questions are really welcome. So whatever it is, uh, we, we'd love you to participate with questions. At the bottom, you'll see there is a, a comments box, and a, please feel free to use that for communication to the team. We have got a team of people behind the scenes who will be trying to answer questions throughout, but there is a dedicated question and answer session, so we will be bringing the questions up that have been asked and displaying them on the screen, which does display your name as well. So please be aware that we are displaying that on the screen. Um, as I say, thank you so much for the time you've afforded us here. If you look on your screens, there is actually a handout section which talks about uh, the NAV fleet, which we're gonna be presenting today. Also, I would remind you that Google Chrome gives the best experience within 23 and there are controls available to you to change and improve resolution to, uh, to be the best uh, for yourself. So without further ado, I'll move across to the presentation. It's very brief, and I will show you where we're going to go today. So today, what we're looking at is, we're looking at uh, two presentations, a brief presentation from Borger Hetland, uh, who's going to give you a welcome and a little introduction to today. We're then going to move across to the main piece for today, which is Nav Fleet. And that will be introduced by Arild, and he will explain who he is and where he's come from and what he's doing within NavTor. Uh, as I said earlier, my name's Richard Northover. I run the UK operation for NavTor. Uh, and we'll move across. As I show here in the agenda, we have a dedicated question and answer section. What we'll try and do is we will keep the presentation to about 30 minutes. And then we'll allow time after that for the question and answer session. We'll put a hard stop on the webinar because I know time is very valuable to everyone uh, at an hour. But if questions come in after that, we'll certainly take those on and we'll answer directly to, to anyone. Uh, but we will use a dedicated question and answer session. So without further ado, I'll move across and I'll introduce to you Burga Hetland, who's the Chief Commercial Officer of NAVTOR, for a welcome message. So over to you, Burga. Yes, hello everyone, and thank you, Richard. And um, good morning and good afternoon. We have um, today around or above 200 delegates from, uh, I think I counted 23 different uh, countries around the world. As Richard say, uh, said, this uh, webinar today is about a uh, NAVFLEET. And uh, over the past few years, we have had increasingly a number of our customers asking for more, or let's say for a system to have in the SEO side, to have more operational insight, to have a window from the SEO side where you can sit and monitor more what's going on on board and to get real-time data from the ship into the office, to take uh, better decisions and let's say the bottom have more control over what's going on. So Navfleet was uh, start is a project who started actually around two years ago, based on a number of, of questions from uh, customers going in with the functionality they wanted to have in such a system. So we then went, um, started a project together with, uh, I think it was 18 different shipping companies with, which we invited into a working group to uh, pick their brain on whatever they wanted to have in such a system. So then we invested a lot in uh, people we set up a dedicated team only for Navfleet. And they have now been working for a long time. And the 1st of February, we were happy to have the first version of uh, Navfleet uh, available. And this is what Aurel will present uh, right afterwards. I also hope that you saw the latest press release uh, from uh, last week, where we announced that Navto had acquired a specialist in vessel performance, a company named Tress which is now rebranded to Navtotras. 
So the idea is to take all the functionality in this uh, truss, the vessel performance, and build it into Navfleet. Because the whole idea is to make one integrated system. So we can build on the ecosystem of Navto, where we have the Nav station on board, we have the Nav box, and then the information from the ship will go through Navbox into Navfleet. And then also the information analyzed, and you can see in, uh, in Navfleet will be shared with the people on board in, uh, in Nav station. So the whole idea is to have, as I said, one integrated solution where all the different stakeholders in the shipping company can see the same data. So they can take decision on the same data. And I think that's crucial. And also for you as a shipping company to, to not have to move between different softwares and different applications when you want to see what's going on on board and take good decisions. So one integrated solution is one of the key uh, with Navto. So I hope you will um, find uh, some nice features in Navfleet. And as I said, this will be a dynamic uh, software. So we will constantly now going forward, issue more and more functionality into Navfleet. So again, thanks a lot for, for joining today. We really appreciate it. And uh, I encourage you to um, ask questions because we can only improve if you tell us what you need. This has always been a business idea of Navto is to listen to, to what you are asking for. So we're not developing things which you or no one else is, uh, is needing. So thanks again and uh, back to you, Richard. Thank you very much, Berger. That's very kind. Um, and what I'm going to do is carry on with the theme that Berger's just been talking about uh, very briefly before we drop over to Aril. So if I can uh, launch my presentation again very swiftly. I've shown this before, but we have added new sections now. Critically, we're talking exactly what Berger was saying here about the e-navigation functionality. Uh, we, we class that as our database or nav cloud ashore which drives and powers the data through to the only piece of equipment we actually install on the vessel, which is a nav box. The nav box can, uh, can communicate to the front of bridge, to the ECDIS, and transfer updates, data, straight to ECDIS on board. But it also transfers data to our back of bridge solution, the nav station. Now, changes will happen on both of those, and they are passed back through the nav box to the database. And at the, that point, in real time, uh, the software we provide for the um, situational awareness and management, which is Nav Tracker, that can dial in on both the normal app and also on mobile apps. Nav TV, which I know a lot of you run within your offices, is available and dials into that same data. And now Nav Fleet has a feed in and pulls data from real time from the vessel and other items to give the uh, to give the optimization uh, and uh, the an analytics available for for vessel managers. So that's where we've we've changed slightly the navigation suite and in, uh, increased functionality. So now I'm going to move across and I'm going to uh, I'm going to introduce Aril, who's going to talk to you more about Navfleet itself the fleet monitoring and analytics. So over to you, Aral. Thank you, Richard, and, uh, and welcome to, uh, to everyone around uh, the world. Um, thank you very much for spending uh, one hour together with, uh, with, uh, with us and uh, giving us the opportunity to present uh, our new product. Uh, as uh, Berg and also Richard mentioned, um, we are in very close contact with our customers when we develop our products. And that is the key for, for, for good business development, uh, we think. Uh, my name is Arild. Uh, I'm the business development um, manager for Navfleet, our newest product. And uh, together with, the, with a huge team uh, in Navto, we have spent um, approximately two years in developing this product. Uh, and also, again, together with our customers who has given us, um, given us feedback during the process as well. So I think if I just uh, share my screen here and uh, we can start the presentation. I have a few uh, PowerPoint slides and I will also show you the live demonstration of, um, of some of the features we have in the Navfleet today. Because as Berge mentioned, this is uh, still a dynamic product. 
uh, we just recently launched the product uh, and it will not have an end state uh, because we listen to the customers and include new functionalities, new features, uh, both based on, let's say, new regulatory demands, but also um, the customer's demands. So Nubfleet is a system, um, let's say, made by the customer's needs. I will jump back to, uh, to this uh, slide, uh, which uh, Richard uh, showed as well. And he also explained um, uh, very well about uh, the Nubbox and, um, and the functionalities of the Nubbox. That is the heart in our ecosystem, because that connects with, let's say, navigation equipment on board. It is also possible to connect to all other types of sensors on board, which could be, let's say, flow meters, torque meters, and, and then basically the sky is the limit for what we can send from the Nubbox to our cloud service. And also, um, let's say the functionalities of the Nub station uh, in our complete ecosystem will have a let's say, dual communication with the onshore systems like the Nub fleet, because we are now able to as a monitor automatically the routes and the passage plans which are activated on board. So we don't need to do any manual work in the office to do automatic monitoring in the Navfleet solution. And jumping back to NavTracker, which is a product we have um, had for many, many years, and is also a product that we give together with our other products. So if you subscribe some, uh, if you subscribe for some of our other products, you will also have access to NavTracker application. And that gives you the, the, the functionalities of, let's say, ordering uh, other subscribing services we have. But it also gives you, um, let's say, the possibility to, to track all your vessels and see where they are. But it's only tracking. It's not monitoring. So if you want to monitor against some, let's say, charter party requirements, operational requirements, or if you're reaching your, um, your planned time of arrival, for instance, it's, it is still a manual work. In Navfleet, this will happen automatically. And that's the big difference between the Nav Tracker and also the Navfleet. Manual versus automatic, uh, let's say, tracking and monitoring. <clears throat> so when we started uh, this process two years ago, we invited um, approximately uh, just beneath the 20 different um, chip owners to join us to make a good product, to solve some of their day-to-day -day challenges, their operational challenges. We had very many good discussions with them and some of their uh, the key pain points were about the, um, the burden of environmental efficiency, the administration, the proving performance, and also troubleshooting. And when it comes to, let's say, the envir environmental efficiency, um, there, is, um, there is a huge increase in amount of regulatory demands. Now it's mandatory to have indicators for everything. It is mandatory to have improved, um, let's say, the monitoring of all emissions. It's um, mandatory to reduce um, the fuel consumptions and also reporting to the regulators. And that's a huge burden for, for many companies. When it comes to the administration, they also mentioned that there is a need for, um, for let's say, better documentation and reporting. Today, there are, many, there are many tools in the market that can give you, let's say, the, the data you need. But uh, there is no good product that integrates all, that, all these systems into one good solution with good data. Um, and uh, also the burden of proving performance has increased because there are so many stakeholders in this business that again requires documentation and reports. And all these parties, they place an extra burden of, um, of how to prove your performance, but also how to improve your performance because you need to improve performance in order to uh, increase profit, but also to reduce emissions. And, um, and when it comes to the tools, um, troubleshooting, they all saw that um, if you have a 
if you have better integration of all these products, it is better, it is easier to have um, better reporting routines and uh, documentation routines. And also, um, it will give you better transparency, which is also a key for good business performance. If you go back to the slide there, John. Okay. So Nowfleet is scalable because we have customers, uh, let's say, having five vessels uh, in their fleet. But we also have customers having, let's say, over 200 vessels in their fleet. And we need to be, flex need to be flexible so we will satisfy both our types of customers. So our product is, um, is suitable for, let's say, large fleet operation centers and also for uh, standard PCs, workstation computers. We will also have um, a mobile application. Uh, just for simplified um, access, which you can use for push notifications if you have some deviations, uh, let's say, in your in your plans. If you have deviations when it comes to charter party, uh, let's say, monitoring, et cetera. So Nuffleet is a short side application. It is not meant to be on board the vessel. It is only intended to be used in the office. It's web-based, so it's not, um, not a new software you need to install or download. As long as you have access to internet, you will have access to Nowfleet. And you can access uh, the application from uh, iPad or uh, a standard PC, for instance. And um, it, will give you, um, it will give you the features of tracking and monitoring. So you will be able to track and monitor your vessels, you will receive notifications if there are some deviations. So it will monitor against a route and passage plan. It will monitor against charter party requirements, your ship owner operational requirements, uh, let's say for weather limits or wave heights, etc. Uh, and again, you will have notifications if there are some deviations to, to the plans or some other incidents. If you enter high risk areas, for instance, you will also have notifications. And after the acquisition of, uh, of TRESS, as uh, Berge mentioned, we also now have the possibility to monitor the vessel performance, which is related to hull, propeller, uh, engines, etc. Uh, and that will give you um, many new features, functionalities. You will be able to improve the performance of your vessel and improve business performance. And it's also in different levels, different modules, uh, because we know that in many good organizations, there are, um, there are teams that can do analysis of performance data. They have the organization to interpret all this data and actually take actions based on the data that they see. But we also have organizations that doesn't have that kind of knowledge within their teams. So we also have different modules when it comes to vessel performance and can assist much more hands-on um, in the evaluations and also the recommendations for actions to improve the performance of your vessel. And then again, also reduce fuel and emissions. There is also a strong focus on situational awareness. Uh, because we know that um, many of the, the actions should be taken on board. Um, we see that um, there is a lack of information flow on board the vessel, a uh, lack of uh, notifications if there are some deviations from, um, uh, let's say, against the operational requirements or charter party requirements or vessel performance. And since we control the, the complete ecosystem from the NAV station with the passage plans and the routes through the nav box and into the nav fleet. We are now able to have a dual communication here. So we can see the same picture on board a vessel and, uh, and in the office. So if the crew doesn't take actions based on their, their deviations, it is possible for the people uh, assured to uh, take contact with the vessel and, uh, and have better communication and better situational awareness. So in that way, we think it's a very good tool for better decision support.
uh, you will be provided both as an on-site, but also in the office with information. One of the key factors for uh, developing good products for Navtov is that we need to make them easy. We need to make them easy to use and easy to understand. Because as I mentioned, in, in many teams, there are different personalities, there are different level of knowledge, uh, different level of education. You have former captains, you have chief engineers, chief officers, you have finance people, all kinds of people in teams. And our product is, is uh, intended to be used across the entire organization. So we need to make it easy to understand and presented in easy ways. And we, we think we have managed to do so with the Nowfleet um, at the moment, but we're still open for improvement and feedback uh, on, on how to improve. When it comes to situational awareness, we like to use five uh, bullets where we can, uh, let's say, uh, focus on. One of them is, of course, navigation. Then we have weather, schedule, conditional trading area, and performance. Because navigation is crucial, we need to have safe navigation. And of course, the ACTIS will take care of all the notifications related to navigation and safety. But it will not highlight or notify you if you have any deviations according to plan. So others can also plan their operations, for instance. Weather is also important because weather will have an impact on your, uh, on your voyage performance. Uh, it will have an impact on your schedule. So we need to monitor the weather as well. Schedule, of course, everyone needs to know when a vessel is, um, is planned to come, um, uh, come to birth. Um, is it according to schedule or is it uh, behind schedule? So they can plan loading operations, for instance. Conditional trading area is also related to let's say, high risk areas, ECA zones, uh, voluntarily reporting areas uh, or other environmental areas. Um, we need to notify and inform if a vessel is operating within specific areas. Because some of them is also requiring reporting. When it comes to performance, which is probably some of the most important for, for many of us, is, um, is, the, is the things we can monitor so we can improve. We can improve uh, how we do business and we can improve how we uh, let's say our uh, emission control. So these are the five bullets for situational awareness. Okay. Then we have different levels. Um, as Bergi mentioned, we have just recently launched this application. Um, and this is the first, uh, first release. Uh, and of course, we want to be in charge of, uh, of this train moving forward um, together with our customers. So we have released uh, two different levels in our now fleet, the basic and a plus. The basic license is, uh, is, is basically a tracking license. It has all the functionalities you need to, to track, uh, track a fleet. It's very similar to the nav tracker, but the difference is that this nav fleet basic license is planned to be used by our customers that doesn't have a subscribing service from us from before. So they can follow a certain, um, certain fleet, for instance. Then we have the plus version, which is also, um, it is, uh, uh, which is the basic, uh, uh, let's say monitoring license. You can monitor the charter party performance. You can monitor um, operational performance, etc. And after the acquisition uh, of TRES, we ha are now able to provide you with more uh, levels related to performance. And it's, uh, it's based on different uh, modules. We have the Pro and the Premium. And both, uh, both levels will also include the tools you need to monitor against regulatory um, requirements, like the EU MRV or the IMO DCS. Uh, and also provide you with reports ready to be submitted. 
We also have other tools to do um, this monitoring of hull main engines, uh, performance optimization, etc. So that uh, that is also part of the nav fleet. Uh, that would come uh, in in 2021. I will jump to the live demonstration of the portal. So I'll just uh, change my screen here. So just hold on, please. Like this. Okay. Can you see my screen? No. There we go. Okay. First, when you open an outfit application, you will see an image like this, the standard map. Uh, and of course, these vessels are demo vessels, so it's uh, it's limited functionalities in this um, this demo version because we don't have live customers uh, in this demo portal. But it will uh, give you an indication of. Uh, of all the functionalities in here. Anyway, you have this map giving you the, the information of uh, where your fleet, uh, fleet are. And you also have uh, the possibility to have different colorization of this map. You can have a hybrid, uh, light, um, satellite, etc., And you will also have nautical charts in here as well. You can uh, add different data layers. So the eco zones, the high risk areas, voluntarily reporting areas, and also take on and off different, uh, let's say, sub areas in the different zones. You can also show the track for all the targets you have in, the, in here. So if I just take last week uh, or the current passage, then you will see the tracks uh, in here. And for easy understanding of what's happening in your fleet, you can access the dashboard. This will give you a quick overview of the status. You will see how many vessels are actually moored, underway, how many vessels are outside the weather limits or good, how many vessels are off track, for instance. And that is also important to know, and also one of the key bullets in the situational awareness. Because I think we all remember the, the accident um, end of last summer outside of Mauritius, where the vessel grounding because of the deviation of the route and passage plan. This can be picked up in the now fleet with these automatic uh, monitoring tools. I also have a box here telling me about uh, all the arrivals for the next. Uh, for this one, it's, it's all arrivals. But I can um, set limits for, let's say, within the next 14 days, seven days, uh, etc. So this is something I can um, change in the system settings. If I want to see which vessels are actually off track, I can click, click here, and I get a list. And I will also see them in the map. And I will also be able to click to on track, no route, and all. So if I jump to, let's say, bag and explorer. I get more information about this vessel. I will see the blue line is showing me the actual route, the actual passage plan, which is sent automatically from the nav box on board to our nav fleet. So I don't need to do anything manual to have this presented in the nav fleet. It, as long as uh, the route has been activated in the, um, on board, it will be presented in nav fleet. I will also have information about the voyage, the loading condition, speed order, the planned time of arrival. And of course, I can change the time settings for my likings. I can use UTC or local times and everything you need. I will also have the information about the schedule and also information about the remaining waypoints. And uh, more, importing, uh, more importantly is the actual ETA because the ETA is very, very precise. It is using the actual speed of the vessel 
and it's using the actual speed to the next waypoint, and then it uses the planned speed uh, based on the passage plan. And then again, when it reaches this uh, waypoint, it will then go over to use actual speed, and then the planned speed when it reaches the next waypoint. So you will constantly have an updated, uh, very correct ETA. Okay, I can go to overview of this passage, and I have some more information or some other information. I have information of, uh, of the weather. I have information about the charter party performance status. So I can see if it's outside good weather. I can see if it's not performing. I have information here if I'm delayed according to the schedule. I have information if I'm off track. And I have set the limit uh, very low just to show you how it looks like when it's off track. I can also zoom in and actually see on the vessel that it's off track. So I can see the deviations down here. And also, if I hover over the vessel, I have the, the information as well. I have the destination, time to go, schedule status, uh, etc. Okay, if I go to the weather uh, tab up here, I have information about the weather. I have a polar diagram showing me graphically where the let's say, weather impact is, is coming from. I have information about the weather forecast in this position at the moment and also within the next six hours. And you can also see that we have used different colorization. White is OK. Orange, then I'm outside the charter party limits. If it's red, it's out, outside the operational limits. I can also show the weather along my route with uh, time and date uh, tags and also get indications from the colors here if I'm complying or not. I can also show the weather along track, the historic weather. And of course, I can also visualize this because it's easier to see. So I can show it very nice here if I'm actually complying with the different limits I have, uh, if I'm inside or outside the limits. So I can see that when I'm reaching this uh, waypoint, I'm actually outside the operational requirement. And I'm also outside the charter party requirement in the orange systems here. So I have the information about the current, the wave, uh, wind, etc. I have it all here. I also have the historic weather in here. And these limits are from charter party agreement. And of course, uh, the, the settings you have set for the operational requirements. Um, I will also show you, uh, let's say, the charter party performance. We have information, if I do like this, we have information here about um, the charter party, if I'm inside or outside good weather, um, if I'm uh, complying when it comes to speed, etc. And now also with um, the implementation of uh, TRES solutions in our system, we will also have the fuel data as well. So that will also be here. We will also have information about, um, let's say, the speed performance, the weather performance, uh, the wave, uh, the wind, etc. That will also be here. I can also access all the routes which are made on board the vessel. So these routes are made on board the vessel, not in this application. So I can access the same uh, route library which they can access on board and also the same passage plans if they have some. So I see the blue one is the active one. So I can click on it and have it presented, but I can also open it. So if I open this passage plan, I will have all the information which is used for monitoring in Nowfleet. And that is all the waypoints that could be under kill uh, clearance calculations, all the schedules, all the publications, everything is, uh, is uh, automatically populated in this application. Take this one, and I'll go back to this one. OK. Uh, I can also, um, if I go back to Fleet Overview, I will also show you something else. And that is, if you have Nubbox on board, 
I have one here, which I can use. I can go to this vessel and I can click on this symbol here and I will show all the AS targets, which is received by this vessel's AS receiver and present them. I also have information about the bearing and the range and also if um, and all kinds of information from uh, from the S uh, receiver. Okay, I see the time is uh, time is running fast, so I will uh, jump uh, back to my presentation and show the the last uh, few slides. Sorry, there we are. Okay. Uh, sorry. This one. Okay, the acquisition of TRESS. As you saw in the now fleet, uh, which I just presented, uh, we don't have anything about the vessel performance itself, because that's the integration of TRESS solutions. Uh, so at the moment, we will start the process in moving all the functionalities, moving all the features when it comes to vessel performance into the now fleet. We will also, parallel to this, also uh, offer the standalone TRESS um, analytics platform and reporting platform. So we are actually able from this day to, uh, to provide you with a total vessel performance solution. And then um, during the next uh, months, uh, we will have a transition over to the Nowfleet application. Okay, so I will, I will just show you a few dashboards and a little bit information about the vessel performance we can offer. Um, and then we will uh, hold a separate webinar where we have an introduction of all the functionalities of the TRESS solution. So we are now able, with the integration of TRESS, to provide you with a holistic uh, system, uh, giving you all information, giving you the tools you need to reduce emissions and have co full control of your fleet, and in a full integrated solution. We are able to integrate with uh, many third-party uh, systems that could be different vendors of reporting systems, that could be different uh, vendors of um, flow meters, torque meters, or other types of sensors, which is uh, necessary to use to have uh, good data. And the organization also consists of uh, many people with good knowledge and good expertise in this business, who has been selling on board vessels, former captains, chief engineers, we have naval architects and marine engineers in this team from TRESS. So some of the information you will receive is related to the analytics module they have. You will have different dashboards. You will have daily activity reports. You will have information about, um, is it related to all the indexes uh, you need to comply to and all the indicators you need to comply to. We will have fuel tables related to the specific vessel and uh, ship models. We will provide you with information like this, so you can see the fuel consumption for a specific uh, period of time. You will see the emissions of CO2, uh, and you will see, um, let's say, the speed performance. And we will use this data to come with recommendations for, uh, for actions. We will have the tools to monitor against uh, MRV and uh, DCS, and also generate reports ready for the regulators. That is also part of this, and that will come into the NAFLIT pretty quick, because that's an easy integration compared to the full um, analytics platform. And also a lot of information related to, let's say, propulsion, consumption, energy efficiency, operating indexes, etc. And also you can compare vessel to vessel, and uh, fleet to fleet. We will provide you with reports like this, uh, with recommendations like this. Uh, if it's time or recommended to do, let's say a propeller polish and underwater inspection, 
we can come with recommendations like this because we have the knowledge and the um, and a skilled team uh, with experience to come with such recommendations. We will also have information about um, the, a payback period. If you do a hull cleaning now, it will take you uh, that amount of time to have returned this investment. That is also some of the information we will provide. And everything is now connected to our, let's say, complete ecosystem where we have the possibility to to gather all that kind of information, both manually, but also automatically. So I think that concludes my presentation. Um, and, um, and, uh, and as you, as you uh, saw, we still have, um, we, we still are developing this product. We are still evolving uh, all the functionalities in this product. But now with the integration of Tress, we will have a complete product that, um, that will improve your business. It will reduce emissions. It will improve profit um, with all that functionalities we have. And of course, it will also uh, as lower the burden, uh, both on board, but also in the offices, because we can all use the same system. Um, yeah, so I think I'll leave uh, the word to you, Richard. And uh, thank you very much for the time. Thank you very much, Harold. That was a very complete and, uh, and, and good presentation. Thank you so much for that. I just want to flick across back to my presentation to do a summary of what we've seen today. Uh, so I'll do that here. So what we've been discussing, uh, Burger presented that Navtor, as we've said before, we're customer driven when it comes to product development. This product came out of a demand by our clients, as have the last couple of products that have come through and been presented through our webinar series. What Aaron Arrow has discussed is, we believe NavFleet is the ultimate fleet management and decision supporting tool. We're looking to help you lower costs with enhanced efficiency. We're looking to improve understanding and optimize the performance of the vessels by linking various products but giving you control. So as Arnold showed again, we, our webinar series will continue. So we have set the date of the 17th of March for the next uh, webinar, which is number eight in our series. And that is to present to you Navtor Tress, the data behind uh, performance and uh, analytics, which will power uh, Navfleet into the future. So what we're gonna move